Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, I'm once again taking a look at one of your designs that you recommended me on Mod.io. And for today, we're looking at another gigantic battleship that features a singular weapons mod that you don't need to use if you don't want to. This ship is perfectly capable of being refitted with vanilla weaponry if that's what you want. But it's called the Praetor Battleship, which is this glorious thing that I'm currently standing on. So this is an absolute ginormous ship that has an even bigger interior that's very easy to get lost in, and I'll mention it right now that I might end up missing out a few rooms due to the fact it's basically a gigantic maze. So pressing F10 and find this in spawn menu, the Praetor Battleship is 11,075 large blocks using all the DLC packs, one mod that we already talked about, and a couple of subgrids that we'll see later on in the main bridge. So giving this thing a thumbs up, what we're going to do is move around towards the very front, have a quick look around the outside as per usual, then we're going to get lost in the interior, then we test out some of the guns against some enemies with a decided spawn. If not, we're going to be slamming this into an asteroid to see the sheer destruction that we can cause to this ship. So at the very front for this ship, this is what we get, and that is a couple of ion thrusters to help slow this thing down. Now above here is some of our modded weaponry, which I presume are rocket launchers. Not too sure what they are, but we'll fire them a bit later on, but we do have a camera in between that and our thruster to help precisely aim them. Getting a bit closer and turning off my light, we can see a bunch of neon tubes with some lovely orange colouring. Then pulling away from there, there's an antenna at the top. And we've got some lovely steel blocks that shoot out from the front to give that overall great look. Moving around onto the side, there we go. Even more great use of our neon tubes just going all the way along here with an intermittent pattern. Then over to this section, a bunch of columns, interior pillars on top of them with some red lights on the end. As we have to move further across, we see a bunch of very shiny conveyors that link everything together. Then moving further across over to this section, we've got a couple of our small atmospheric thrusters, some more shiny blocks, this time our columns. Then up to here, some more modded weaponry, where they look like giant cannons. Then we've got some small, almost like auto cannons to blast your enemies with. Pulling back away from here and over to the main body, there we are. Moving across to this section, a bunch of thrusters, some more shiny conveyors right below that. Then over to this section, more hydrogen thrusters, and then a couple of air vents to suck an auction from the surrounding areas. But I do believe I called them atmospheric thrusters a little bit earlier. So do excuse that. Anyway, moving slightly along, this is our hangar bay. If you store a small ship or small fighter inside, we've got two connection points to dock up to, and then the doorway to go inside. We'll see that a bit later on if we find it on the interior. Over to this section, there is a connector for you to dock up to a station with. There's a bunch of iron thrusters through some passageways. And coming over to this section, towards the very back here, there's a spotlight to light up the darkness. Moving around towards the very back of this thing, we've got six large hydrogen thrusters. Three large ion thrusters, and then a bunch of small ones of each that give us one hell of a lot of speed when moving this thing around. Moving all the way up and looking down, we then got a bunch of rear facing cannons. Then coming all the way along, once again, some more very shiny blocks. Then over to the section where our bridge is sitting, we've got a large antenna dish, a little spinning thing acting as a small radar, some more pillars on columns with an interior light on top. Then over to this section, we can see some windows appear inside, which is where our subgrids are sitting right next to our bridge. That will appear all the way down for the moment. Here we go. So there's your main helm to control this. There's your little subgrid with a bunch of program blocks on there, some LCD screens for some decoration. And well, we'll come back to this a bit later on. Anyway, moving all the way up, moving towards the middle of the ship. There we go. There's our big main cannon, which is the one that I was sitting on at the very start. We've got a bunch more hydrogen thrusters to help move us down. Then we come over to this section. We've got a bunch of doorways, where behind this are a couple of modern weapons. I'm not actually too sure what these actually are, but I was playing around with them, they just sort of shot straight up like a rocket launcher, so I'm not sure whether they're flares or whether they're homing missiles. We'll try and test them out a bit later. Anyway, back to the top, moving towards the front, there's our guns and cannons we saw on the side of the very front. Then going towards the very, very front, there we are. Now moving all the way down underneath the thing, putting my light on, and come across to this section, there's a bunch of lead blocks to spell out the Praetor, hopefully I am saying that correctly. But there's another modded weaponry, there's a bunch more hydrogen thrusters, there's another modded gun. Over this section, more hydrogen thrusters, there's two more air vents. Then going towards the very back of this thing, there's another large modded weapon, more hydrogen thrusters, more of those weird doorways open up to reveal more rocket launches, some shiny knobs. And then towards the very back there, another modded weapon, and some iron thrusters. And there we go. So that's a very brief look around the outside. Do excuse me not being able to name the guns, because there's a lot of mod packs in this game and it becomes very difficult to actually remember what all the weapons actually are. Moving away from there, it does look bloody fantastic with how it's all being set up. I absolutely love the shininess of the ship, not too many ships go for that, 
But I do love it when the light just about hits it, especially on that rotating antenna at the top there. Just adds that little bit of extra detail to it. It does make it look fantastic from a distance. But now what I'm going to do is just grab hold my character. This is going to be the confusing part. Because now we've got to find the doorway to go inside. And then we've got to find a way around the ship. Now I'm not too sure where I actually left the proper doorway to get in and out of this thing. I've already been out of it a few times already today when I was checking this out. So I suppose what we're going to do is start by going to the hangar bay. So all the way over to here, down we come. We've got some lovely neon tubes around the edge here. And we've got a lovely light on the side. We clearly set a connector as we were to dock up to this. And here's our two interior connectors for you to dock your small ship, mining ship, fighter ship, depending on what you need. There's a couple of heat vents on the side there for some decoration. And here's our doorway to head on inside. Well, this is going to be an absolute maze. And once again, I'm sorry if I get lost and have to skip out chunks of this. But yes, this does have the auto door and airlock script on this. All the doors will automatically close behind you. And this is what we're first greeted with. So here's another neon tube. There's a little chair for you to sit on. There's an air vent. And now we've got to walk all around here in a lovely passage. There's an armory locker around there here. And now we've got a ladder head all the way up. So coming up to this section, we've got a lovely doorway. We can open this up and come through here. So walking up to this section, we've got a few ways to go. And I suppose what we're going to do is start over in this section, which should be towards the back of the ship. So here we go, we're going to come through here, which is our engineering bay, which is a giant gobbledygook of all the stuff you need in survival mode. Your hydrogen tanks, your hydrogen engines, cargo containers, O2H2 generators, and everything else you can think of. So here's our hydrogen engines to give it a bit of power. Over to here, O2H2 generators, which do have a bit of ice inside it. Turning around to here, this is your industrial assembler. So we've got to access that, we now build a few things in there if we needed to. Walking along to here, there's some red hydrogen tanks. There's some ladders to go up that will come to in just a moment. There's some large car containers in a lovely green colouring. Over to this section, a small little shelf. Behind here, we then got another O2H2 generator. More fantastic use of our neon tubes. And more ways to go above us. Anyway, walking around to here and entering into this. Guess what? Another O2H2 generator. Walking up these steps, around into this section, we see a way on the opposite side, which is identical to the way that we're now going, so we won't bother going up that. Around here, we now got easy access to that hydrogen tank if we need to repair it up. But walking up to this section, it's like a little perch to view what's going on inside this area. But onto the opposite side, and you've got a little toilet to recharge yourself, and well, do your business. We're going to turn around and come over into this section, so we've got a ladder that goes all the way up. But in this section, it's kind of like a small, short little area for you to peer inside this section, which has your air vents, so you can double check if they're actually functioning. We should come and drop down to the opposite side, which is identical to what we just saw. We've got a few barrels just dotted around there if you saw a few bits and bobs inside. Dropping all the way down, and now we need to come over to that little section we saw at the very start. So over here, we've got another little ladder shaft, comes all the way up. Onto this section, we then access an LCD screen telling us about hydrogen. Moving all the way up to here, here we go. And then got a bump panel, which is going to control our hydrogen engines, so we can turn them on and off if we need to. And we can even restart them when we want. On this section, not too sure what that block is, but that's another O2H2 generator. Looking up to here, and there we go with this part. So dropping down to here and coming towards the rear of the ship, past some more lovely green cargo tins, past some more lovely barrels. Now I need to open up this section, but we're going to be greeted with our pinky door once again, but this one is not going to lead to the outside. Instead, that's going to bridge us over to the opposite side of that room, where, well, now we can walk down that corridor instead. And I suppose instead of coming to the opposite side, we now walk through this section, we're going to open this up, and now we're going to be greeted with, basically, an exterior door that's guarded by a hangar bay. So in this section, I suppose we're going to open up this door. To open it up, there's your hangar bay. Press that button, that's now going to open up, and that reveal us to the outside. If we're to float away, there we are at the back of the ship, on a very sneaky doorway. So just sit below our searchlight. Opening up this once again, and now walking through, we now close that up. There we are, and I just walk through this section once again. We're going to do the opposite side, because that is identical. So instead, we're going to walk through this section, and go towards the front of the ship. So opening up this, here we go, into this section once again with our lovely blinding white lights. There we are, there's another engineering bay, which is where we're going in just a moment. So walking through here once again, all the way up to this part, there's our doorway to open up, now come into that section, where there's the door through the opposite side. Opening up this, here we go, now drop down here, where we've got a bunch of shells lining the room, we then see our large reactor in the middle there, another air to make sure we don't suffocate inside here. And we've got a way to go down, First of all, just walking through the section and past our reactor. Now I'll come over to this part at the back. We've got a lovely little crate to store a few bits of bobs inside. Over around to this section, just a little walkway for you to waddle around in. Now we come past this, over to here, 
now dropping all the way down, there we go, I forgot I was still in survival mode for my previous video. In this section, we've got a bunch of small reactors, well, give it a bit of power. Trying to put my light on, there we are, didn't want to do it for some odd reason. And that's all there is in this section. So jetpacking all the way up, it's now time to come to the back of this room, but once again we've got a little crate to open up and saw a few bits and bobs inside. Still very much reminds me of the Borderland crates. Got this, we've got an LCD screen blocking a doorway, where we were to come past this, we then see a bunch more small reactors, where we've got some on the top row and some on the bottom row. Not too much else to talk about in this room, just fantastically set up. And now just come down this ladder if we need to, or come back through this doorway to where we just were. Now walking through here, coming all the way up this, and now turning around, open this up, it's now time to continue on with our tour of the ship. And I suppose we've come through this side, now to be on the opposite. So now walking through this section, we've got a little place where we're going to drop all the way down, turn around, and come into here. This is going to take us to our main living quarters, which is going to feature all your beds, a way to get to the bridge, and a small little elevated system that is very nifty. Anyway, opening up this, here we are, this is our living quarters, where on this side we've got all of our kitchen stuff, and it would appear that my power is low, so just going to undo the helmet, and we'll turn off a few other things. Now we're going to walk around this, up these steps, and then we're going to come to our proper kitchen bay with our tables still and eat your food. There's a little table for your clan cola, and there's a vending machine to get your drinks. Sitting in the corner and looking around, there we are. Now we're going to come down these steps, past our lovely fish block, I still absolutely love this block. It's just so nifty. And we come to the opposite side. This would be your sitting area, where you've got a few beds in there to have a little nap on. But around this corner, we've got our entertainment center, small place to get a coffee, and then we can sit down and watch a movie. On this side, there's a little bookshelf. Behind this chair, we've got another vending machine. And then if we have to come all the way up these steps, all the way around, we'll then have another entertainment center, a few planters, and an inset sofa. There we are. Let's come into this corner, looking towards the back. There we are. Now, heading all the way down and through this section, we now need to come, not through that door, because that's going to take us to where we just were, that's going to take us to our bridge. We now need to come up these steps, open up this, and if the door were open, now we come through this section right here. This is going to take you to both your medical bay and then your living quarters, where on this section, on the right hand side, opening this up, double door frame airlock, we then got your crew quarters, where they've got a bunch of beds lining the room, then we've got a way all the way down to here, we've got even more beds for even more crew members. Jet packing up, opening up this doorway, come back through here, into the red door, this is your medical bay, where, well, as a medical bay should have, got a full-on medical bay block, and then got a little scanning machine, and then got a bunch of cryopods, so it's sitting right below this section, so come around here, drop all the way down, there we are, there's your cryopods, into the opposite side, there's some explosive barrels, which I suppose you could do if a patient decides to mutate and go on a rampage. Up to this section, all the way up, now coming out of this, wherever the door has gone, opening this up, we now come into another doorway, which is much more fancier than the bedroom that we just saw. This is more like for the captain or a first mate, where we've got a single bed, a toilet, a planter, and then got a bookshelf and a little place to make your coffee. And in this station, we've got some more shower and a lovely wooden floor. Walking around here, here we are for that room. So now, what we've got to do is come out of this area, into this section, and now we've got to go towards the bridge corridor. So opening up this, this is going to take us to another area where, like I said, it's going to have an elevator. So pressing this, that's now going to bring it all the way down very smoothly, very safely, where we can now get on top of it. There we are. Hit that button once again, wherever my crosshair has gone. There it is. Now we're going to move all the way up. And we should come to a section where we now walk around. That's a wall, not too sure why I was facing that. But there's a bump panel to actually call it up and down in case you do get trapped up here. And we walk around this section. It's the same on both sides once again. All the way through, there's that area that we just saw, but from a much higher view. On the opposite side, there's a steel block. Walking through this section, all the way around, but they come to another section with once again another elevator. We can press this, call it all the way down, a little planter there for some decoration. And then, like before, we now need to wait for it to come all the way down, get on top of it. Then we need to carefully aim, hit that. Now we're going to be taken all the way up, and this is going to take us to our bridge that has the subgrid of all the programmable blocks on there. But there's an LCD screen telling us the time, and then turning around into this section, through here, another ladder, all the way up, and then finally, I believe this is the last room on the ship, open this up, here is the bridge, and once again, another fish block, and we've got a few seats and our subgrid with our programmable block on there. Just looking around the room here, we've got a little hidey hole down here, we're about to come into this section, open that up, that's the way we just came, there's a little doorway that comes through to this section with a bunch of 
programmable blocks lining the walls, and onto the opposite side. There we go, it's basically the exact same. Anyway, if we were to ignore the main helm for the moment, come around into one of these seats, they've got nothing going on with it, but we can see the time of day, our power and hydrogen usage, and we can just about make out another LCD screen, telling us our planetary and atmospheric gravity. Hopping out of this, come around towards the very front. So this is all we can see from inside here, and so we've now come around into our proper helm. So into this, here we go, bring up the HUD, these are the only controls we get, and I will say brace yourself, because this is going to get very loud when I turn on that weapon. So we have to bring the camera all the way over so we can actually see what's going on with this, that should do quite nicely. Pressing number 2, we then get a volley from our modded weapons, this should deal a lot of damage to whatever it hits. Anyway, for the other controls on this, we've got number 1 for our camera right below our modded weapons, so we can see exactly where we're going to shoot, then we've got number 9 for our hydrogen engines to turn them on and off. To have number 2, we then got our little places on top that house our rocket launchers, or at least I think they're rocket launchers. For this part over here, we can press number 1, that will open up, reveal our launchers, but it will not fire. If it was to come into this section and actually find the modern weapons, I think it's this one, so if we were to shoot now, there we go. We get some rockets shooting all the way up, if we were to follow them, they sort of look like cruise missiles, but I'm not too sure they're going to actively track the target, but they should do a lot of damage to whatever they hit. Anyway, coming back down to the ship, all the way down to here, and coming over to tab number 3, we've got nothing else, I believe it's time to drive this thing around. So, converting this back to a ship, here we are, and now moving forwards. This thing is bloody fast, considering how big and how heavy it is. Yes, it's not going to be zipping around from 0 to 100 instantly, but for the sheer size of this, that is very impressive. Coming to a stop naturally, it's going to take quite some time, so do make sure you've got plenty of room between you and your destination. Make sure you don't go and plow straight into it, and well, blow up everything you want to keep. You will use this to make it forcefully stop. There we go, grab and hold my character once again, moving left. Not too bad speed, but it's still very slow at the end of the day. Moving all the way down, still very slow, and moving up. It's a little bit faster than moving down, but nowhere near as fast as moving forwards. As for gyroscope controls, this is what we get. It's surprisingly easy to control. It's very heavy, it drags around a lot, it certainly suits a gigantic ship, but still, it's very responsive, which is very surprising, but not too surprising at the end of the day because we do have manual fire weapons in the front here, where we will need to be able to line that up with a target, go and shoot them. So to finish off this video, what I'm going to do is slam this into another version of itself, but first of all, to show you all the weapons firing, what I'm going to do is find the turrets inside here, and we're going to select all of them and tell it to shoot once. There we go. That is what it looks like. One hell of a lot of weapons on here, and should deal a lot of damage. But unfortunately, I can't quite get it to shoot the other ship, so I believe these are all broadsiding weapons, and not turrets, unless I am missing some kind of crucial component to the mod that I'm not aware of. But yes, to finish off this video, like I've said, what I'm going to do is reverse this up, I'm going to slam it straight into another version of this ship, and see what kind of destruction we can cause. And here we go, we're now charging along towards them, let's just shoot a little volley of that and straight into the side of them, see what kind of damage it can do. And a fair amount of damage, my god, look at that, that's extremely powerful for a weapon. But no, we're going to charge straight into that, and I think that'll be that, we're going to go for the thick of the body. Hiding the HUD, here we go, any second now, raising up just a little bit, we're going to miss it. And, there we go, that's a lovely bit of destruction, but it didn't really do too much. It sort of crumpled the front, but we can still fire our guns and make a gigantic hole into them. But as for that, that's pretty much it for the Praetor class battleship. It's a lovely ship to use in your world, it's big, it's gigantic, got some very powerful modded weapons on there which do kind of outclass everything in the vanilla game, so use them at your own risk. There'll be linked to its description below if you wish to download and play around it yourself, highly recommend you do. There'll also be a link to the Skybox I'm currently using, and I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.